Okay, K-Mag, I just wanted to run through a few of the basics on the dashboard with you just to make sure that you're familiar with everything, okay? Right, now you're familiar with the engine modes, ERS, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the revs. Yeah, so you know when to change gear. Right, right. I mean, I assumed you knew all this to get the Formula One. You know, you've got to know some stuff. And uh, the little red light, the little red gas can light that flashes red. Yeah, well, when you see that, mate, save some f***ing fuel! Hey guys, I'm Ozzy Villain, and welcome back to Hass F1. It's Kicking Hass, and we are going to be at the Monaco Grand Prix today. And, uh, well, after last episode where we were at the Spanish Grand Prix and K-Mag ran out of petrol on the last lap, uh, that was all very, very frustrating. So hopefully we've explained how things work to him now, and he should be okay. Uh, we've got engines in poor conditions. That's fine. We can switch those out for Monaco, I suspect. What we'll do is uh, we'll try and play this a little bit smart, which is usually my downfall when I try and be a little bit uh, too smart for a game. But we will change the engines now. So we, uh, this is only got one. What we'll, this is my, this is my plan is we'll use one engine for FP1, one engine for FP2. Then if we have a bad qualifying, we can uh, whack on another engine, take the penalties in Monaco because you can't overtake anyway. If you don't qualify well, you're not going to score points in all likelihood. Uh, and that way we've, um, kind of hopefully anyway rigged the system a little bit in our favor by being able to to take the penalties when as i say most likely we are going to be uh struggling anyway so we'll do all of this ready for uh ready for free practice so i don't forget to do it um and then if obviously if we qualify well then we'll just we don't take the penalties so it should work out either way for us that way uh yeah we can do it with you of course the thing i'm gonna have to remember to do is to change all this after fp1 aren't i but uh anyway hopefully i am not well i am an idiot <laughs> on this occasion uh i can go uh, past that for a moment all right now we do have some driver upgrades available to us sergeant i think i mean smoothness adaptability i mean i did see there was a comment and it was a good point is you're better off having a fast driver and then dealing with the rest afterwards so we might look to use that and I think if we can get everything up to 70 as a baseline and then we can then we can sort of pick and choose exactly what we want to do to to improve things but pace i mean it's if you're not fast you, you, you're nothing are you really in formula one so uh k mag what's his weakest is defending uh so we might look to do that for him yeah i do i think 70 as a baseline should be the minimum of, of any attribute for these drivers and one manual career no development points and i suspect we won't be seeing many from there either if we have a quick look at we have finances we've got 24 and a half million in the bench so if we go and have a look at facilities and what we can look to do to upgrade you can see our facilities are not great the race simulator we're currently updating and we don't have a helipad. We don't have a hospitality area. Now, that's not going to be great for attracting drivers or sponsors or anything like that. So a million pounds on hospitality. I think we can just about stomach that. Let's get a helipad. I mean, I don't want to have to drive to work anymore. So that's that. Memorab we don't have any memorabilia. So maybe we hold off on that one for a moment rather than have an empty memorabilia room. And the team hub will help. Uh, does that help? Yeah, weekly experience gain. So let's 1.5 on that. And I think it's worth spending the money on on upgrading these things. So now the factory is going to be a big one, isn't it? It's going to it's only seven million. So maybe we do that. So the factory, I mean, it's important, but actually, I think what we want to do is we want to be able to develop things a little bit better, don't we? So ten million on the wind tunnel will help us develop a faster car. That'll take us to eleven million in the bank, and I think at that point we need to we need to stop. But, yeah, I do want to make sure that, you know, but the whole of Haas has to improve, doesn't it? So that uh, is that. Now, we've only got four days between races here, and we've got research on a front wing complete. So that means we can go and do something else now for the car. Uh, the Monaco Grand Prix preview is up. So that's all very exciting. We'll have a look a little bit better look at that when we go to the race prep. So we can research a new car part. Now, from what I understand, and I may be a little bit slow on, on the understanding of this, research for the car is getting ready for next year's car, if I'm not mistaken, and then uh, the design is for this year's car. So I think we... There's a big part of me that thinks if we just go big on next year's car and maybe that's that's what we do. Now, do we, what do we have going currently? So we're currently designing a rear wing. 
Okay, let's go to our car analysis and see where we rank on the grid in certain areas. So rear wing should help the high speed. We're actually got quite a decent car don't we so i wonder i wonder i wonder what have we got so far have we done a new underfloor we have done a new underfloor we haven't upgraded side pods which will help a little bit with cooling but our cooling isn't bad maybe we go again on the underfloor up to get an update on the update the underfloor is quite important, I think, isn't it, with the ground effect cars. The front wing as well. So let's maybe let's maybe do another underfloor to improve that a little bit further again. Uh, we have 31 days till the next thing, so let's go big on this. As long as things are going up, that's fine. 45 days of wind tunnel hours. That'll make that all a bit better. Because it'll take about 31 days to do this anyway. Uh, we'll go with a balanced approach, I think. And we've put out... Only got four engineers, so it's going to take 58 days. So yeah, we're going to be well and truly into the new uh, the new allotment of time by the time we, we, we're ready for it anyway. So that's fine. Let's hope that the new underfloor is magnificent. And let's get ready to head off to Monaco now. Let's have a look at... Actually, let's have a look at the circuit. Uh, the thing with Monaco is that, in my personal opinion... It's a bit of a rubbish track now. It, you can't overtake, and you're going to basically be stuck wherever you are, wherever you start. You might make one or two places if you're lucky. So, performance targets. I mean, it's very much... Uh, can we get 12th? We'll just reach Q2. Yeah, I mean, we can have this discussion during the race because nothing typically happens during the race. I just think that... I actually watched because I like well, watching Formula E as well. I watched Formula E race around the whole track, and it was it was quite good. I mean, the nature of Formula E just kind of helps the overtaking around Monaco. I just think maybe Monaco is better left for not Formula One anymore. That's just my personal opinion, no matter how historic it is. And it, it is anyway. You can see the weather there; it's uh, not going to rain, which complicates things for us. Uh, we are not, as I've said before, Juan Manuel Correa is not going to get the car time. He's not good enough, basically. Um, so he is just here for uh, for a bit of a uh, experience as being a reserve driver, and that'll be it for him. Um, Monaco is a track of extreme, so let's start with that sort of a setup and see how we go. I think, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see. Obviously, we've got time to work on things, so I will keep you updated as to how we go here. We'll get K Mag with a hopefully useful setup for him, and uh, yeah, out we go. All right, so here we go. The glorious Hassers taking to the Monaco track for the first time this weekend. Let's hope it's a good one. No crashes, please, guys. Okay, so K-Mag has come back in after his first run, and we've nailed the front wings, just maximum downforce. That's, uh, that's not too difficult to predict. And... Well, now we've just got to play around with things and try and... Uh, yeah... Try and see if we can improve it a little bit more for everybody. We can see here we're just waiting for Sergeant to come back in and see how his setup is. Uh, he's down there in 13th, which is pretty good. Uh, he's about 4 tenths off of Magnuson, which is closer than we saw him in FP1 last time. Uh, now, he doesn't like the braking stability. He likes his front wing there a little bit more, uh, less on the front. Well, I don't know how we fix that braking stability, if I'm honest. Can we go that way with that? Okay, so toe out actually helps that more. I always get that mixed up, which is the one that... Okay, so what if we... We'll send him back out with that and see how he goes. All right, so we are coming towards the end of the session now. We've just sent them both back out on soft tires as they were still waiting for the second lot of feedback from them. Uh, Sergeant is uh, P15 now. K-Mag up there in P8 and only about a second off the pace. And that, that time was on hard tires as well. He's got a little bit of... Mag, it's got a nice little bit of uh, free air there as well. So hopefully... He might even be able to go a little bit quicker now. Sergeant is just... It's, it's, the track is just ridiculous. <laughs> if I put them out in free air, then it just seems like somebody else comes out in front of us anyway. So, Kev, see, he thinks it's, the setup is good. Uh, we'll call him in, I suppose, and see how he goes. And we're just waiting for Sergeant's last bit of feedback. But, yeah, FP1, I'd say it's been a relative success.
Okay, so FP1 has finished. Charles Leclerc led the way for Max Verstappen. See, they came out. That's not bad. Top eight. That would be points, essentially, in Monaco. And uh, Logan Sargent, I'm okay with him in 15th, ahead of a McLaren, um, not a mile behind uh, the cars in front and on a hard tyre as well. So, yeah, I mean, Piastri has a few uh, reserve drivers that did the session, so maybe maybe that flatters him a little bit in terms of how close he is, but not too bad at all. 83% uh, on his setup. K-Mag went the wrong way, so we, we went the wrong way on his setup uh, when we changed things. So, yeah, still work to do, but uh, I'll change the engines and the gearboxes now, and we'll be off to do FP2. Okay, so we are coming up to just halfway through FP2 now. Uh, we've got only what's that only like a two tenths one tenth uh off is sergeant of um uh, magnuson which is good uh we're just again playing around with magnuson setup a little bit uh we're still waiting for sergeant to come back in with his first feedback of the session but um yeah it's it's going well particularly for logan sergeant yeah he's, he's really close to magnuson here and that's that's a massive positive for us okay so unfortunately with uh with Sargent here, we've gone the wrong way again on the setup. He almost wants the opposite to what Magnuson wants, it looks like. So we've uh, changed the anti-roll bar distribution, so we'll hopefully improve the traction there, and then we'll see where that leaves everything else. Obviously, Monaco, slow corners, we're going to need traction. So we want to get that sorted out, then we'll uh, then we'll sort of tweak from there. Okay, so FP2 has now finished. K-Mag up there in 7th. That's nosebleed stuff, although it was on a soft tyre. And Logan, uh, Logan Sargent, I should say, down there in P14. We're still... I can't get the setups just right. So it's going to be a big uh, FP3 now because we need to make sure we have it set ready for qualifying. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll find exactly what they want. Okay, so we've got Logan Sargent back in, and we are getting very close to a setup that he likes, aren't we? Optimal for three of the four. Braking stability is the one that is not quite there for him. So let's tweak it and see how that goes for him. Yeah, we'll see how that goes for him. One thing I have noticed here around Monaco is that it's taking them a long time to get the feedback that we want. Um, usually, you know... I think it's 15 lap runs and usually I can call them back in before that's done because they've got sort of their three, their five out of the five feedback, but it's taking sort of a run and a half almost. It feels like around Monaco for whatever reason that may be, but we've got K Mag sitting up there in fifth now, which is brilliant. He's come back in. Let's see how he's, he's not quite got all his feedback yet. Has he? So we'll just have to send him straight back out. See how we go. Um, but this is looking decent for k-mag now it, sergeant is almost a second off of him so that's obviously not ideal though he is stuck behind looks like alexander alvin in the williams just now so maybe that would explain some of that pace deficit but yeah k-mag absolutely flying around monaco so k-mag is back and he is 95 percent happy with everything yeah i don't are we happy with 95 percent, or do we try for a little bit more we try for a little bit more, don't we? 95% is not 100%, so we can't be completely happy with it. So we'll strap on a set of soft tires, and we'll send him out, and hopefully um, he's going to get the feedback in time so we get the, the, the you get a bonus, uh, performance bonus if they're ha completely happy with the setup before, they know the setup um, before the, you go into qualifying, so you get the 5 out of 5. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to have enough time to do it. Well, hopefully we will. In comes Sergeant. He hasn't finished yet, has he? No. So we'll send him straight back out. And uh, he should, he will have time to get this done, but we're not going to have time to sort of tweak. It'll have to be a setup that he knows if this isn't uh, quick enough. So there we go. Anyway. Whoa, Logan Sargent has just uh, had a little bit of a moment here. I think he's kept it off the wall. No, oh, I don't know. He may have damaged that rear wing. Let's have a look and see what he's done here. Mechanics aren't happy with him. It's okay, Logan. We all make mistakes, mate. But uh, wheels and aerodynamics, he has damaged the car. So we'll have to bring him in. Luckily, it looks like he's done all these. Uh, he can give us the feedback. So that's something, but not ideal. Though he is 99% happy with the setup. I'm going to call that a win. It's annoying. We can't the last one percent um but given that we actually need to we need to change the the rear wing wasn't it um yeah it he may not actually have time to get back out i don't think so we'll put a set of soft tires on so he has a chance but 17 minutes to go i don't think he's going to get there 
Okay, so free practice is complete. Magnussen finishes eighth within a second of the Red Bull. That is as close as we've been, I think. We'll see how we do in qualifying. Logan Sargent, 15th. Again, still ahead of Denny Rick. And uh, not a mile away from Norris and Sonoda as well. So he's doing really, really well. I'm quite pleased with how he's doing here. That's brilliant. Uh, and, well, K-Mag, I think he has a better a setup than that. So that's... We'll go back to that for qualifying, but it is, now will be time to go and uh, do the qualifying. Okay, welcome back. We are going to send them straight out. Um, ideally with Magnuson, I think we should be able, okay to only get one. Uh, we'll do one initial run, then one run at the end. 15th, of course, which is where Sergeant has been throughout uh, free practice, is the cutoff point. So... Yeah, we'll see what sort of time he can lay down here. Perez has come out right in front of him, which is not going to have helped. But uh, he is he's a second off Magnussen, so he's going to definitely have to do another run here, isn't he? So we'll send him. We'll get him ready to go back out. He has tyres, so that's not a problem. Uh, let me just slow this down so we can try and pick a spot for him. We want to go after Perez. So if we were to send him... Oh, Perez is coming in the pit. So out you go. And he should have some clear track, which is good. That's what he needs. Magnussen is currently in P3. We can probably sp speed this up a little bit. We just need to see what sort of time. I imagine he's going to go quite a bit quicker. He just got absolutely balked, didn't he, by Perez. And he is just behind Perez now. So that's decent. All right. Now, I've just got to try and pick the moment. I don't want to go out too early because then we will catch cars on our lap around when we're doing our qualifying lap. It's only a short lap here at Monaco, so we should be able to send them out. Do I not reconfigure Magnus? And he's going to miss out now. Go, K-Mag. Go like the wind. I don't know if I've given him enough time there. That's a massive stuff up on my part. But let's ride on board. He should be okay to get through the session anyway. Let's ride on board here with Logan Sargent as he tries to get himself out of Q1. And as we know, Monaco qualifying is everything. It's essentially the points. Uh, now, where's K-Mag? Is he going to get around for his lap? He's not. I've stuffed him up. Sorry, K-Mag. He should be fine. He's only got to get out of the session. He doesn't need to... He doesn't need to sort of... This isn't going to set the grid, so... He should be okay. I thought I did change... Anyway, I'm an idiot, basically. Let's see. Sergeant is down on the first sector time. He does have a car in front, but it should be far enough. It's an Aston Martin, is it, it looks like? Or is it an Alpha Tauri? It should be far enough in front not to disturb him. We've got four cars behind him that have already done their lap. I think he's going to get out here. Sergeant is almost certainly... He's gone faster in the middle sector. And Logan Sergeant is about... He's out. He's already done it. Whoa, that's excellent. Logan Sergeant. Now, he's in 11th. Could we be on for double points around Monaco? That would be something, wouldn't it? Let him finish the lap. He's down there in 12th now. And he will stay in 12th. Wonderful stuff, though. We're both out of Q1. So it's a bit of a shame, actually, that he got balked so badly by Perez on that first run, or else we probably could have saved him a set of tyres. Uh, but I didn't, obviously, I didn't know exactly how much pace he had. But we're ready to go here. Two cars into the next session. We'll do our first run on used tyres. And then the second run will be on... Uh, K-Mag only used one set. Oh, yeah, because he didn't actually do the lap, did he? Uh, so we'll save a new set. We'll save a new set with K-Mag. All right, so they are coming around to start their final lap. Now, K-Mag is currently in P7, so he should be fine. It's Logan Sargent that is the man we have to watch. He's currently in P12, which obviously is elimination zone. He'll do brilliantly. If he gets into the into Q3, I will be delighted. If he can, If he can hold P12, I'll be delighted as well. Uh, that gives us options then in the race for one of the cars to score points. We can do something a little bit different with Sergeant. And uh, I think one thing we can say for sure is that we're not going to be taking penalties here. Because uh, it's not going too bad. K-Mag has been slower in his first sector, which isn't ideal. Sergeant has been quicker. Come on, Logan. We are the last two cars to cross the line. Sergeant will be the last car to cross the line. So we'll know, kind of like we did in Q1, if he is likely to get out. And to be honest, there's a, a fairly big gap. He is unlikely to get out. I'm more worried about K-Mag, to be honest, who's gone faster in the middle sector. Now, how has Sergeant gone in the middle sector? Should find out just here somewhere. He is slower. So it's he needed to be faster there, didn't he? K-Mag is about to cross the line. 
K-Mag is through. Can Logan Sargent find three, three and a half tenths in this final sector? It's unlikely. Logan Sargent will start the Grand Prix from 13th. And that is just a dry qualifying session, you know, that's just purely on pace. That is absolutely brilliant. What a what a qualifying session for Logan Sargent. All right, it's K-Mag time now. Q3, let's see what he can do. Okay, so K-Mag currently in P5. Now, what we had to do with K-Mag is actually do two runs prior to his... This is the brand new set of tyres now. His first lap, he was horribly balked by Alonso. So we sent him back out again on used tires. So he's done two runs on new used tires, and we can see they're putting fifth. So this is this is a set of new tires now. If he can find a little bit on those, I mean, if he can start this race in fifth. Now Perez Hamilton didn't do representative laps by the looks of things, so it's going to be tough to get ahead of them. But even starting seventh, potentially, that is huge. But let's see, he's gone slower in the first sector, which is disappointing. Let's see as drivers start to finish now. He's ahead of Norris for sure. Alonso, I think, is coming around to cross the line, is he? Maybe not quite yet. Bottas has not gone quicker. K-Mag's faster in the middle sector. Alonso has gone quicker. We want to get Alonso. He balked us so badly on the first run, all the way through uh, the Lowe's hairpin and that, like that worst part of the track. Somebody else has gone in front of us now. We're down to eighth. Come on, K-Mag. Finish it off, mate. Finish it off. We're down to ninth. Can he get ahead of a few? K-Mag. No, he starts ninth. Oh, that's a little disappointing. So there we go. That will be the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. Sergeant will start 13th. K-Mag will start ninth. If you are ready to watch the race, there'll be a linky thing up there. Just click on and uh, go and watch it straight away. Make sure you thumbs up and, uh, and subscribe if you're new, obviously. But uh, leave me your comments now. Give me your predictions for the race before you watch the race episode. And uh, will we score points with K-Mag? Will K-Mag run out of petrol? We'll find out soon. Take care.